Well, welcome back, and I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Diego Bernay and Cristina Varesmo, who are the co-founders of uh, CVDB Arquitetos Asociados in Lisbon, which we had, of course, hope will be our host city this year and will be next year. But perhaps uh, for the purposes of the uh, talk now, they are the curators of the Lisbon uh, Triennial, which is taking place. Um, and somehow, Diogo also finds time to run the School of Architecture in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, they're going to make a short presentation about the trian triennial, and then we will have a discussion about issues around curating architectural programs. So over to you, Diogo and uh, Christina. Well, hi, good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, um, everyone. Uh, it's a, a great pleasure to be here. Uh, we feel very, very um, uh, happy and... and, and uh, humbled to, to, to be able to participate in this great event, uh, uh, even uh, being online with the, with the wishes of being uh, in Lisbon in, in a year from now. So we're we'll going to talk a little bit about the, the work for the, the coming uh, 2022 uh, Triennale. Both Christine and I will speak a little bit about what uh, we, we, we've been up to with, with, with this. Okay, so let's start. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon for you. It's good morning for us here in Canada. So um, our topic for uh, Triennal, Lisbon Triennal 2022 is called Terra. And Terra is a Portuguese word that has a deep meaning. It means it can express the planet Earth. So Terra has, uh, can be expressed as the territory, a city, the landscape, the place where we belong or a continent, it seems, from the sea. It might be an inhabited planet or a material to cultivate. Uh, it can't be how we um, or I can't see on there. Um, uh, it, it, and so we want to, to use the Triennale 22 instance to question our recent paradigm are shifting from our current perceptions of a placemaking in the globalized world. Inquire how architecture will contribute to a broader ecological narrative and, uh, and how the future of the planet in all its inhabitants. And address all climate challenges and resources pressures, social, economic, environmental inequities are profoundly intertwined uh, with the needs to ev ev evolve from models of linear growth of the city as a machine to models of circular development as city as an organism. And provide a platform where multiple and diverse voices and perspectives coexist beyond their apparent dualities. So we are having mainly for exhibitions we're going to have conferences that we call Talk, Talk, Talks. We're going to have 12 independent projects. We're going to have three awards for universities. And we're going to have a collection of books. And then we're going to have, um, and then we're going to have, can you shift, please? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on okay. it. Okay. Okay. Yes. And then we try in this triennale to have uh, the four exhibitions to work together. We gave a name to each one of them, so they called uh, multiplicities, we're going to call them visionaries, cycles, and retroactive. We call curators from all over the world, so for example, multiplicities, we ask curators from South, uh, South, South Africa and from India, so they are Tauta Vagawa, and from uh, Vijante Rao from India, and they put together an interesting, uh, uh, well, interesting exhibition called Multiplicities. We have Visionary curated by, by um, Anastasia uh, Smirnova. We have Cycles curated by Pamela Prado and Pedro uh, Alonso. We have Retrospective curated by uh, Loreta Castro and pa uh, José Pedro Ambrosi from Mexico. And all together, they work to make uh, this triennale as exhibitions. 
And so Diogo is going to exp explain each uh, exhibition. So uh, we'll start with multiplicity. So another thing that is important is, is this uh, event is going to take place in se several venues uh, across Lisbon. So we are partnering with, with uh, multiple in institutions and the Galbank, namely uh, Penelope uh, uh, talked about early on this morning, and is one of them where the Talk Talk Talks will be hosted. And multiplicity will be at the Contemporary Art Museum in downtown Lisbon in, in, in the Chiado area. And, and basically, uh, multiplicity will, will address how issues of inequity and, and, and social justice, and, uh, 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 ranging from projects from various scales across the planet, uh, are, are, are trying to address these issues. So it, it, it's, it's, um, an opportunity for us to look uh, and learn from uh, different practices, um, no matter what scale, and how architects and, and, and other fields and the professionals from other areas are working together to, to, to address these uh, issues. Retroactive is, is, on one hand, somewhat similar, but is now focusing specifically on the work, uh, works of architects and mostly public work where uh, communities or urban fabrics are, are at the point of, of either no return or, or beyond anything that had ever been designed. So looking at work at the fringes of cities and, and in communities that are in much need for the work of, of, of architecture. So this focus on a little bit on, on a, this sense of hope and this exhibition will, will be hosted by, by the, the Museum of Art, Architecture and Technology in Belen, which is the Western part of um, Lisbon. The next exhibition is Visionaries. And this is going to be uh, by, by Culture Gest, which is a, a, an art, mostly an art gallery uh, in, in what is now the kind of late 20th century, early 21st century BCD uh, um, or a core area of Lisbon, which is a little bit towards the north of part of, of the traditional city, very close to the Galbenkian. And, and it will, will address this, this idea of how architects throughout time have always, um, through their work, their drawings, their texts, provided visions, alternative worlds, and how this has been a constant um, uh, in, 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 in the way artists have, have, have produced uh, their work. So how can artists contribute to these narratives that are uh, projecting us to, to different ways of conceptualizing the future? Um, the next one, uh, the last exhibition is Cycles. Um, it will be uh, also in the garage in Seoul, which is again, close to uh, the Museum of Art and Architecture and, and Technology. It's part of the, the Belen Cultural Center, and it's, it's, it used to be a former car park that is now being used for, for mostly a, a architectural vision space. And this, this uh, cycle's exhibition will address how our processes of architecture, how we deal with materials, how we look at, um, uh, at the planet as a whole, as a resource in its multiple complexities, and how do we uh, understand that, that we need to work with materials beyond their multiple life cycles. So that, that's uh, it for, for the four exhibitions. I just wanted to say that one, one of the things that for us was very important within, within the setting of these exhibitions was to invite people who have worked, practiced, researched uh, in multiple areas across the planet. We wanted to have uh, um, an adrenal edition that is not mostly about how the global north or um, how uh, there's a kind of a hero-centered vision uh, around problems and issues and opportunities that we have across the world, but mostly how can we listen to other perspectives and learn from, from these other perspectives and how can we know more about um, these issues uh, and how they are being addressed across the world. So together with this, we're going to have a conference series and we're going to invite speakers from all over the world. And we're going to cross these exhibitions topics and we're going to have uh, people talking and debating these topics. 
together with the, the besides the talks we're going to have um uh, the, the books the books will gonna stay uh dissemination of architecture contemporary discourse so we have these pocket books that you're gonna carry and remember this triennale for the future together with the books we're gonna have the universities competition we're inviting universities all over the world so if the universities are here please apply you have until january the 7th to apply we hope uh, all the voices of universities are going to be there. We are going to have the universities being exhibited together uh, with all the exhibitions. So all the students are going to be present with their work in the exhibition. So this is one of the contributions of the researchers and the universities in the exhibitions. We hope to see you there. Um, we also are going to have the debut awards. So this is to aim to support new voices in practice forms. Uh, so it's going to be a world competition to open to young architects under 35 and life award uh, achievement. Uh, uh, so this is to have uh, some uh, uh, distinguished active studio or individual for those work will be recognized. Besides that, we're going to have independent projects in multiple and diverse forms to, to hope to have an amplified uh, reflection. Um, so after that, um, it's uh, hope to see you there. It's going to be from the 29th of September to the 5th of December, 2022. So we want to see you in Lisbon. Yeah. And 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 hopefully, if if next year uh, WAF will indeed take place in Lisbon, uh, I, I would just say what an amazing coincidence and alignment uh, will dance together. Jeremy, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And it looks like you're putting together a really uh, fascinating program. And I wonder though whether there are specific characteristics of Lisbon, it, either its past or what's happening in Lisbon at the moment, that you are working with to create this, this very international programme of the Triennale? So, do you want to start? Yes, maybe I could. I think, I think Lisbon always been a special place. And in fact, um, I, I have to say that we were always a periphery of the core. And I think George Louis Borges always said that there is in, it's something the periphery that makes us to look different. And I believe we have that special kind of look that makes us to look beyond and towards that make us a special place. But, to, but even, even in our history, uh, we, we are a special place. We are, uh, we always look towards, uh, towards beyond because we are close to the water. And so we always had the opportunity to navigate. And this idea to navigate is something that we always enjoy to, to navigate towards, uh, turbulent waters. And so I think this idea that we always like to, to search for new things, let's put it this way. So we always open to new challenges and we are open to that. Um, but also Lisbon well, is, a, some, is a beautiful place. Sorry? To some extent, uh, Por Portugal used its ability and its liking for navigation to move it from being the periphery of Europe, which is a geographical fact, being almost you know the center of the world because in the in the 15th and 16th century you know going to brazil going to southern africa going around southern africa to india and um, you know that that made lisbon something other than being peripheral it made it central to a new perception of the world but one thing that intrigues me about your program is you talked about working with curators from india and from southern africa now, both of those are places where there was historically very strong Portuguese involvement. And I wonder if that sort of Portuguese diaspora is part of what you're working with in your programme. Um, 
I would say it is not. Um, we we looked at uh, so when we first looked at the, the this the topic, which is very much connected still with with uh, looking at the planet as a whole and understanding the challenges we have ahead of us. We looked at um, people who were doing research on these particular topics across the world. So we, we there was no attempt to uh, connect uh, or pursue this this idea of the diaspora at all. It, there was a, a, a concern or a desire to learn from those of us who are who have been doing extensive research uh, on these topics and and then tr trying just to get to know them better. Trying to uh, li listen to the lectures. Um, I mean, there's there's a, a, a lot of material on 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 every one of of, of uh, the curators, and then through conversations, we we kind of stabilize the team, and 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 obviously the the, the themes have matured with uh, greatly with their contributions. So we 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 more uh, I would say interested in in um, bringing to Lisbon, and that is part of its history. Um, the opportunity to to listen to multiple voices, multiple sensibilities, and in that way, you, one could say we we celebrating this this um, not even apparent dichotomy between Lisbon, uh, its peripheral pivotal condition, and also its universal global condition as well. Regarding what's happening nowadays, I mean uh, Lisbon as as as. Uh, a lot, a lot of places across the world. If you look at the 20th century, um, as much as Lisbon was spared from the war, but um, uh, Portugal had a fascist uh, government for many, many years, and and that there was a, a clear flat from from a lot of um, artists, architects, uh, poets, writers, cinema directors, to to other territories because their ability to practice or to do their work was 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 um, quite quite significant. And what we see nowadays. Is is uh, uh, if we look at all the kind of global economic crisis that we've been going through, what we see is is Portugal and Lisbon as as um, as a place that produces architecture and cinema for that matter as well. It, it has, in spite of its small size, let's say, and peripheral location within Europe, has been able to produce uh, quite significant examples, and 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 uh, it's it's been. Not worthy that uh, architecture that comes out of Portugal is something that uh, a lot of people are paying attention across the world. So I, I find that w w there's there's some sort of, as you mentioned, some sort of stability there, but also how uh, th through um, continuous, as it were, uh, uh, economic crisis, how uh, with with a, a sense of resilience and and adventure and and uncertainty, uh, how we've been navigating through through this. Um, I, I think one of the uh, subjects that, that interests me, um, having worked quite a lot of uh, my career in, in some form of curatorial role, is what are the particular challenges in curating events or programmes of events with the subject of architecture? I mean, when one's dealing with fine art, the subject matter is perhaps easier to define, or at least the object you might put on show are easier to define because they are um, you know, in the case of painting and sculpture, at least, they are finite objects which, you know, you might have to move and that might be very complicated to do so, but they, they, they can be moved and they can be measured and they can be placed. Whereas with architecture, you're dealing primarily, it seems to me, with systems of ideas. And do you think that that brings particular challenges for curating a program? And if so, what, what would, how would you um, describe them? So, well, I mean, one one of the things that uh, obviously we we we've done extensively was looking at at uh, all the, the the recent biennials and and and, and other uh, special events that are have been taking place uh, recently across the world. Uh, exhibitions in Chicago, Seoul, Korea, um, Oslo, uh, Venice, uh, and 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 one of the, the kind of early questions is how can we um, work and do research and present an idea that might be relevant um, in two or three years' time, and and that might be and, and and understanding it as part of this, let's say, curator curatorial world or, or realm, and and still push forward 
the field and 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 basically ask hard questions uh, to 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 those of us who are involved in this field, either as as educators, researchers, critics, uh, um, practitioners, and 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 uh, other people who, who with whom architecture is is always uh, connected. So one one of the things that uh, we 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 also uh, asked was. Is this going to be a, a kind of a, a more mythological, inward-looking exhibition, or is this going to be a more outward-looking um, um, exhibition? And, and as you can see from the themes, we, we, we were always more inclined, not only from the kind of curatorial perspective in terms of bringing uh, diverse voices, but also in terms of what we think that architecture needs to, to address as, as its kind of, let's say, social, political, economic, cultural relevance across the world. So the, the, those were kind of, let's say, early conceptual uh, challenges. And, and then the, the other challenge is, is um, working with, with, with all the, let's say, local infrastructures, local institutions. The, the, the triennial team as well, uh, most, of, most of the production team has been with the triennial since 2007. So their experience and their knowledge and and, the, and 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 let's say their capacity to put things together and make them happen was also quite crucial and 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 a good challenge to uh, to to take into considerations and so for us those were the two three things that um, we were concerned about at the beginning and 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 also how do we do did we kind of position uh, these early ideas so that we could then also invite curators to 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 do the exhibitions in the past uh, um, the the main curators for the previous um, triennial editions curated one or two uh, or, or a lot of the exhibitions we made it very clear that we wanted to establish uh, themes ideas but invite others to take then a lead role so that um, the trinal would be uh, more about uh, diversity than, any, than anything else. And, and it was also very clear to us that we want to include the universities within the exhibitions. And to us to have, to give a voice to the new generations was key here, not to have a separate exhibition as the previous triennales, so we were very clear from the beginning to the to the curators to say that uh, the new generation must be included in your exhibitions was like very important to us. At the same time, to have the topics intertwine, um, this is the first time that in this triennale that all the curators talk to each other. We have a team that we have all the exhibitions knowing what we all doing together. This is something that is a circular, it's not only the topic that is talk about circular uh, architecture, but is also a circular triennale. We all know what we all doing and we all contributing to every exhibition. So that was also key. And that's a lot of work because it means a lot of, t a lot of meetings that we all doing so that's very challenging and 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 that was something that we all may try to make it work mm. so that is a challenge for us so for us uh, this was something that was challenge another thing is how do we communicate to the public because this is not just for peers this is also how do we reach the public and especially how do we communicate this with a different uh, public because there's also children included and the other day we had a discussion about how tall are the tables because the tables could be seen by children so yes it's a challenge but it's a wonderful challenge because um it's, it's an experience that it grows every day it's wonderful i like yeah. it and, and, and I'm, I'm very... on... Just a, a small, a small uh, item I wanted to add as well. One of the things that Trinal also, given it, their experience, uh, um, um, each exhibition is curated by a, a person or a group of people, but also then the exhibition design is is commissioned 
by uh, the two now to a different uh, um, group of people as well. And one of the points is that we want everyone to be conceptually, artistically and creatively and critically engaged with this process. So, uh, for instance, the curators do not necessarily choose the space where the exhibition is going to take place. It is up to us to mediate the kind of the potential of the exhibition and, and, and the kind of the matching of the institution and, and the space and constraints that, that um, each institution has in terms of their agenda. Um, in terms of, of the calendar of the events they are planning, et cetera. Et cetera. So th those are in kind of a series of constellations that um, make this process uh, in these two years of work that have gone so quickly so far, really interesting in terms of the conversations we've been having. I'm, I'm very interested in this, um, uh, you know, the collaborative process you're describing that um, and the relationship between that and research, another w word that you've used, that, that, that this is a, a, about research. It's about both generating research, but also drawing on research. And I wonder if you can say a bit more about perhaps the relationship with um, institutions that undertake research, like universities and maybe some sorts of cultural institutions, and how you can draw on those both within Lisbon, in which they're what is it eight schools of architecture in and around Lisbon and you know, a series of, of, of really significant um, uh, cultural institutions like the new Mark building and uh, the Gulbenkian um, and how but also how that might tap into an international network of institutions museums and uh, and uh, universities so, so one one of the things that we we also uh, uh, introduced that is very different for this edition is that in the in previous editions there was a specific theme and topic and a, and a, a, a separate exhibition for all the the, the the university's work. So students of architecture mostly from Portugal and or where some Portuguese art uh, were teaching would would then apply you know to design a, a new urban area for a particular uh, site uh, uh, either around lisbon or in portugal and the, the clear difference we we are introducing is that there's no specific exhibition for the universities uh, we need to recognize that these younger generations um, work that has been done either at schools of architecture landscape architecture urban design planning and and their research centers as well laboratories can be really relevant and interesting if they are inserted in the four themes. So what we're looking at is an exhibition that speaks also about the kind of plurality of perceptions work that we know now that um, either has been recognized across the world, but also work that is being now uh, investigated and, and speculated about. So um, we're kind of very curious to see how this is going to work. We've had several sessions with several schools of architecture across the planet to, to explain how this process can, can, can develop. The other thing regarding in local institutions, one other thing we insisted was we, we wanted to present these to the, the, the four institutions that have in the past partnered with Journal um, as soon as possible. So what we've done like mid 2020 was um, just it just have a conversation uh, kind of present a draft of, of these uh, four exhibitions at a very early stage and and this allowed the curators or the the directors of these institutions to really be engaged with the theme to to have also their critical uh, voice being uh, be included in in the way this project uh, was going to to develop and also to, to um, listen to um, how would they see, because the, they obviously know their space way better than, than, than us, how uh, they could contribute to, to, to ensure that um, the ambitions of each exhibition would come to fruition. And, and so that, per, that participation, that dialogue, uh, can make, made it uh, make, made the process of, of mat developing maturing the themes way more collaborative and, and way more, more interesting as, as uh, we uh, throughout this process obviously we have to have series, uh, a series of presentations to the trianal itself but to to open it up to these these institutions and, and these directors uh, who will be are now profoundly involved with with the work it was something that was really really uh, interesting 
And just to clarify, and, this is an open call. Any school of architecture can apply. And this is a competition. So we're going to select who are the best schools and which are the best works. And the ones that uh, each school can apply to the different teams of the exhibitions. And the ones which are winning, they will gonna be shown in the exhibitions. So that's, that's the idea. So it's an open okay. call to the world any school of architecture is open. Well, that, that's clearly you're, you're also you, you, the ambitions, what you're doing, reach way beyond uh, Lisbon and, and Portugal. But I wonder if you think there'll be a lasting legacy uh, of the Triennale in Lisbon itself. Do you think Lisbon will be changed as a result of this? I hope so. We hope so. I think, but but listen. The idea is this is a shifting point in the world. We are hoping this is about Terra, the world Terra. It means the planet. Mm. This is no longer about Lisbon. This is the voice of Lisbon to the world, because this is not mm. just about a point in the planet. This is about the planet Earth, the planet Terra. So uh, we hope. Uh, that this is a voice to the world. That's why it's in Lisbon, but we hope this is more, is, is stronger enough to be heard everywhere. Because architecture matters, you know, and we all have to be attentive to the changes we have yeah. to do. And, and, and uh, I, I would say that um, having just been at the, at the Venice Biennale um, recently, one of the ambitions is by having four uh, exhibitions, four themes, and, and, and if having invited four curators who have done a lot of work in those themes. And then with the mixture of the talks and the publication, that, that sense of legacy and research can, can, can uh, linger on and, and can, can be continued uh, across the planet. As, as again, we also, did not want to we wanted to provide an opportunity for lisbon to to bring together th this multiple and diverse uh, themes voices and ways of understanding what are the current issues across the planet that we as architects and society in general uh, can can address uh, with with obviously a sense of optimism because it's, it's in our nature and and the fact that we're bringing together um, schools and research and and practice we hopefully will will uh, provide a kind of a, a different kind of platform for things to evolve and and, and continue uh, it, it is obviously part of our ambition to to let's say set up the, the the tone but to to allow this this ways of working and understanding how we can work together how can we live together? This is com coming from the Venice Biennale um, uh, 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 for the near future and for the future of uh, the coexistence of many species across the planet. So, so I guess if you um, yeah, put a, a very simple gloss on it, if you had the choice of uh, changing Lisbon or changing architecture, you would change architecture. But I think it's partly because you want to change how both architects see their role uh, in engaging with architecture or practicing architecture, but also to get people from a, you know, who are not architects and might not think that they would ever engage with architects or architecture, to think more about how they might do so and indeed what the process of architecture, what sort of architectural thinking, the collaboration that underpins it, um, might help us to um, you know, look forward to the future with some optimism. Yep. And, and, and in that sense, for instance, uh, the exhibition, uh, the multiplicity, um, it can, can really contribute uh, to, to a, a, a shift in the way, let's say, our communities and, uh, and architects uh, work together. Mm -hmm. And, and by, by showing case, uh, processes and examples of, of work that, that, let's say, is developed in a kind of transdisciplinary way so it, and that is uh, an exhibition that is going to take place downtown in, in in a museum that has a good record of a lot of visitors that go and and see 
contemporary art and it's kind of in the downtown traditional area of Lisbon. So we were also uh, as, as much as possible um, careful about uh, the place, the location of every one of these uh, exhibitions. Uh, as in a way, the Triennale will also allow anyone who's not from Lisbon to uh, visit the city and, and, and just because the, the exhibitions are in different locations to get to know the, the kind of the, um, the city in its history, the diversity of its urban fabric from kind of a more Moorish influence to, to, to kind of a more illuministic and, 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 and uh, Parisian influence. And, and then uh, looking at kind of the, the waterfront projects uh, and how that whole waterfront has been revitalized since the late 20th century. And, and, and looking at, for instance, the, the Mat Museum is, is um, a former uh, power station. Um, so, so in that sense, uh, I think there's great opportunities for, for people to learn about the history of the city and, 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 and look at its examples and how they connect to other examples across the world. And, and as you're saying, to look at generic issues, like you know, an awful lot of cities, particularly uh, port cities, uh, have uh, had to find ways of re-inhabiting former industrial or former logistic you know, port lands, not least London, but also Helsinki, which we heard about earlier today. Um, and, uh, and, and very often, the catalyst for that is some sort of cultural activity. It's, it's either a museum or it might be the site for a Biennale or a Triennale or something like that. And I guess that's part of what Lisbon is, is, is doing with, with um, its, uh, you know, creating a Triennale in the first place. Yes. Yep. And, it, and it's a large program. It, it, will art, it will last three months and it will have diverse opportunities for you to visit any time. So it will be a lot of activities. And Lisbon is a rich city with lots of things to do. And another thing is we have a, a special kind of, of, of generation of architects. Um, we, we used to say we have a concentration of Pritzker prices at this point, but, but it, it, we have something to, 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 to share. So it, it's, it's, it's a fabulous time to, to be and, and, and to, to, you know, to, to talk about architecture. And this is a moment that we have a message to talk and we have a duty as architects to actually uh, see architecture in a different way. And, and this is the time that maybe this Triennale will try to send a different message to say that the planet is looking for that. The planet can no longer live at the same way and we have that responsibility and why not uh, to try at least with this triennale. I, I don't think we will have a, a full length of solutions, but at least we try to, yep. to give a, an opportunity to see differently. And, and in that sense, for instance, and, and cycles, that... it's, it's just, just, uh, just a small point, cycles, for instance, in exhibition, that basically what, what it's telling us, there's no waste, right? I mean, we only have one planet. Mm. And, and, and so mm. it's not about waste management, but it's understanding that we, we have one resource, Terra. That's, a, that's, that's, a, that's our resource. And I think that that's a very good note to finish on, because I think this, this all reinforces what we're trying to do with the World Architecture Festival, which is to think about how Absolutely. architecture helps people to project the future. So thank you very much for telling us about your so much. plan, Triennale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.